Hello there, welcome to Standard Voice Television News Channel. I am Fawzi Ibrahim. Here are your top stories for today. The Zamfara State Police Command has paraded one Nasuyugaba, alias Mo, for giving fake information. President Muhammad Buhari has assured of his administration's determination to support the military to end all sorts of banditry in the country. The federal government has handed over the renovation of the National Theatre in Lagos to the Central Bank of Nigeria. On business, Nigerians believe rising inflation will weaken economy. And on the international scene, President Buhari calls for operationalization on common position on assets recovery. Now on the news in details. The Zamfara State Police Command has paraded one Nasir Gaba, alias Mo, for giving fake information, claiming that there was a shrine in the state where over activities are being carried out. Parading the suspect before the news means in Nugusau, the police commissioner, CP Usman Nugugu, said Nasir Gaba was arrested for giving false information over an alleged shrine in Zamfara State. CP Usman Nugugu said, the police, after taking thorough investigation, has discovered that the arrested whistleblower has intentionally misled the security operatives on his own hidden motive. Our correspondent, Dairi Samaila Mafara, who attended the press briefing, reported that the informant, Nasir Gaba, had on April 7th told the state police command that there was a house at Ungwe de Lasu in Gusau, the state's capital, has become a shrine where all sorts of evil and cult activities are being carried out. The police commissioner said investigations conducted by the police revealed that the informant identified as Nasir Gaba had grudged to settle some highly placed government officials in the state, executed his own plan in order to achieve the predetermined agenda. However, CP Usman Nogogo said in achieving that he lured one Mustafa Abdullahi and Hassar Gaba to secure the pot, the calabash, blood, and take the clothes, which was part of the exhibit to a tailor, without selling them his mission. It will be recorded that on 7th April 2020, the police command addressed the press on an information that was termed as at then credible. In the police desire to ensure justice and fair play, Many people were arrested, some were invited, and some were interrogated. This is after we have first take, painstakingly got some expert advice on the purpose of the exhibit recovered and advice offered appropriately. Not only that, some exhibits that require laboratory analysis, like the blood, were also taken to the lab technicians in Federal Medical Center, Goso, where the report confirmed the blood to be that of human being and was sold out to be all negative. However, on 6 April 2020, the case took another dimension. The informant whose identity was hidden then turned out to have carefully planned and executed his own mission in order to achieve predetermined agenda. Investigation has revealed that Nasur Garba, alias Mo, has some grudges to settle with some highly placed government officials in the states. In achieving that, he lured Mustafa Abdullahi and Hassan Garba, who were initially not informed of the purpose to which some of these exhibits are being sought. They were used to spare the forts, the calabash, the blood, and were even used to take the clothes which part of the exhibit to the toilet. Police were able to get evidence from those who innocently sold the forts saw the blood and even saw the blood from abattoir. You may recall some time ago, I perfected the arrest of a, some, some item believed to be a shrine, you understand? And in the course of the investigation, I have narrated all what I have seen to the police. And many witnesses associated to that arrest were invited and they also testify in my people. You understand? So, and now, 
the reverse is the case because those people that saw those items were not invited again. It was only me. This is a selective justice because when you have not concluded investigation, you cannot call press people and said you begin to tell them maybe the blood has been recovered. The blood has been recovered. It was sent to hospital. It was tested. It was discovered to be human being blood. And now you reverse the case. You have not taken the blood back to the the same hospital which confirms the blood to be human being blood and you now said the blood is not human being again. According to CP Usman Nogogo, police were able to obtain some evidences from those who innocently sold the pot, saw the clues, secured the blood from the abattoir and the Sangaya school where he took the ink and wrote all the Arabic inscription and the mentioned items. It will be recorded that the police has earlier announced that the preliminary investigation has confirmed that the blood discovered in the shrine house is that of human. Troops of exercise, Sahel Sanity, flashed up the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tsuku Yusuf Berete, has killed scores of bandits and rescued many kidnapped victims and ammunition. Briefing journalists at the Nigerian Army Super Camp 4 in Faskari Town on Sunday, the acting director of Defence Media Operation, Defence Headquarters Abuja, Brigadier General Bernard Onyeko said Operation Sahel Sanity, which commenced on 6th July, is aimed to aggressively root out armed bandits, castle wrestlers, banditry, kidnappers and other criminal elements from the zonal west zone. General Onyeko said few hours after the inauguration of the operation, the troops got a call of the presence of bandits in El Gamji in Basari local government area of Kazina State, which made the troops quickly mobilize and engage the criminals, neutralizing scores in the process. He said the troops also engaged bandits in Magira, Makwarua, Garindamu, Kasale Made, Dadunkowa, Gangara, and Shadema in Sabambrini and Ise local government areas of Sokoto State, and pursued the bandits killing two of the fleeing bandits while many others escaped with gunshot wound. The troops also arrested one Malam, Halilu Ibrahim, a bandit informant and a seller of rustle cattle, who was about to display some stolen cattle for sale. The troops also arrested one Malam, Sani Sada, from Katsale village in East local government area of Sokoto State, who later confessed to be among Briji boys, a notorious bandit leader, who commissioned them to kill and rustle cows in the area. General Onyeko said the troops intercepted bandits with large number of rustle castles from Jangeme village forest to Kwarenganwa in Zamfara state. The troop sprang an ambush at Gidanjaja and Zulmi local government area of Zamfara state, where the bandit fled with heavy gunshot wound, abandoning one AK-47 rifle in the process. President Muhammad Buhari has assured of his administration's commitment to assist the military to end the banditry and insurgency in the country. The Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Salihi Magashi, retired, gave the assurance during the closing ceremony of the Nigerian Army Day Celebration 2020 held at the Army Super Camp 4 in Faskari Town of Kazina State. He said, President Muhammad Buhari will ensure that all presidential obligations required by the armed forces are provided and will continue to demonstrate political will and determination toward ensuring that insurgency and criminality are totally eliminated in their country. We therefore owe it a duty to continue to make available to you all the necessary moral and material support that you may require to function optimally. I wish to assure you on behalf of the President and the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, that all our obligations shall be faithfully discharged to you. We will continue to demonstrate the political will and determination towards ensuring that insurgency and criminality are totally eradicated in our dear country. The minister 
congratulated the Nigerian army on its 157 years anniversary and taxed them to continue the onslaught against criminal activities. In his remark, the Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tokuru Yusuf Beretai explained that Nigerian army has redoubled its effort in the fight to eliminate banditry in Nigeria. General Beretai said the Nigerian army is fully committed to flushing out bandits in all parts of the country. Today, I am glad to note that the measures we took five years ago have contributed immensely to enhancing the efficiency of Nigerian army, resulting in improved security as witnessed in the Northeast and across the country. Some of the achievements we were able to record in the aforementioned areas are what have been documented in this compendium being presented to the public today. The book, Compendium of Nigerian Army Transformation, the Buratayes 2015-2020, is not a self-assessment, but an attempt to provide a fair record for reflection on our modest but collective efforts in transforming the Nigerian Army to a more efficient fighting force. It is hoped that the legacy of the publication as a reference material will encourage future leadership in the Nigerian Army and indeed all cadres of personnel to sustain the tempo and build on it. Our correspondent Iris Amaila Mafara, who attended the occasion, reported that during the ceremony, seven officers and nine soldiers received the Chief of Army Staff Award for their gallantry and professional competence in their primary assignments. <laughs> IT has been observed that there would be grave consequences if Nigerian student fails to participate in the 2020 West African Senior School Certificate examinations. The Vice Chancellor, Trinity University, Prof. Charles Oyo, also a former Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, made this known in an interview with the news agency of Nigeria, NAN, on Sunday in Uta, Ogun State. NAN reported that Minister of Education Alhaji Adamu Adamu had on July 7th said that Nigerian students would not be participating in the 2020 West African Senior School Certificate examinations. Ayo said that the non participation of students in the 2020 West African Senior School Certificate examination would affect the admission of students into tertiary institutions. The National Association of Proprietors of Private Schools and the National Parent Teachers Association of Nigeria has appealed to the federal government to reconsider its position on the Senior School Certificate Examination, SSCE, being conducted by the West African Examination Council, WAEC. The government had last week said no Nigerian school would participate in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination earlier scheduled to hold from August 5th to September 5th. The Education Minister, Adamu Adamu, said the atmosphere is not conducive for the May-June diets of the West African Senior School Certificate Examination to hold in the country. But the stakeholders described the latest position of the government as inconsistent and confusing. The minister had on Wednesday announced the reversal of the government's earlier position on schools' resumption, saying the atmosphere is yet unsafe for teaching and learning in the country. Mr. Adamu's position was based on the rising cases of coronavirus disease in the country, saying children would find it difficult to observe the required protocols, including social distancing, to keep themselves safe if allowed to return to schools. But the NAPS president, Yemi Otsubila, in a telephone interview with Primum Times said private schools across the country are set to participate in the examination, noting that the required protocols as recommended by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC in the management of the coronavirus disease will be observed. He said a formal appeal will be made to the minister on Tuesday, saying rather than blanket non-participation of Nigerians' candidates in the examination, the government would set appropriate rules to guide the conduct of the examinations and ensure strict compliance. 
Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, handed over the renovation of the National Theatre in Lagos on Sunday in an event that the CBN Governor Godwin Omefeli and Lagos State Governor Babaji Desanu Olu in attendance. Governor Babaji Desanu Olu said the restoration of the National Theatre Igamu will change the activities and perception of arts in Lagos State. The governor said the move is a new dawn for the tourism and creative economy in Lagos State as today. The National Theatre was handed over to CBN and Bankers Committee to turn around the national heritage through renovation and modernization, upgrade and development. Governor Sanmu Olu expressed happiness that the edifice will be a makeover that will transform the tourism and entertainment sector of the economy. He said it is significant to note that the turnaround will create jobs and boost the creative enterprise of youth in Lagos and across Nigeria. The death toll of the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria has risen to 740 as 16 new deaths were announced by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC on Sunday night. Nigeria recorded 15 deaths from the virus on Saturday. The fatality rate from the virus in Nigeria is about 2.2%. Nigerian tally of confirmed COVID-19 cases rose to 32,558 as 571 new infections were recorded on Sunday. The new figures showed a slight decrease from the 664 infections recorded on Saturday. The NCDC in it said the new cases were reported in 30 states, including Lagos, 152, Ebony, 108, Edo, 53, Ondo, 46, FCG, 38, Oyo, 20, Kwara, 19, Plateau, 17, Oshun, Bayosa, Ekiti, and Kasina recorded 14 each. Others are Akwa Ibum, Kaduna, Rivers, 11 each. Niger 10, Ogun 7, Kano 6, Cross River 4, and Bauchi 2. Meanwhile, all 36 states and the FCT have recorded at least a case of the disease. Lagos State remains the epic center of the disease with the highest number of confirmed cases and death in the country. While Zamfara has not reported any new confirmed case in the past 55 days, to the date, 32,558 cases have been confirmed, 13,447 cases have been discharged, and 740 deaths have been recorded in the 36 state and the federal capital territory. Since the outbreak of disease in Nigeria in February, almost 200,000 samples have been tested. Data from the health agency also indicates that the country is witnessing a high level of community transmission of the virus as 73% of the total diagnosed cases reported on known sources of exposure to the virus. Also, NCDC said that the predominant age group affected is 31 to 40. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control says 21 herbal medical products are currently being processed by the agency for safe use or listening status. Professor Mojisola Adeyeye, the Director General of the agency, disclosed this in a statement she signed and made available to newsmen on Saturday. According to Adeyeye, manufacturers of these products who have applied to the agency claim that their products are only immune boosters and anti-infective, useful for relief of symptoms that could be associated with COVID-19. The Director General said in a statement that no clinical study has been done yet on any of the products to prove their claim of efficacy and safe to use testing. President Muhammad Buhari heartedly congratulated Kamaruddin Usman on his successful defense of his ultimate fighting championship welterweight title with emphatic win over George Masvida. As the first African-born and Nigerian UCF champion, President Buhari commended the courageous fighter for finishing strong inside the octagon, proudly flying the green and white color in distant land and reminding the world that good things and great people still come out of Nigeria. 
While the global COVID-19 pandemic may have brought gloom to many families and nations, the president is delighted and gratified that our welterweight champion has lifted our spirit with another professional performance, providing that things will surely get better at the fullness of time when we remain committed to our vision. And on business, over to Samira. Hello, I am Samira Ibrahim with the business update. Many Nigerians believe the rising inflation will lead to a weaker economy. The Statistics Department of the CB and disclosed this in its quarter two 2020 inflation attitude survey report obtained by a correspondent on Sunday. The CB and said the survey was conducted from May 18th to 27, 2020. With a sample size of 2,070 households randomly selected from 207 enumeration areas across the country and a response rate of 97.9%. The report said respondents believe that the economy will end up weaker if prices start to rise faster than they do now. Given a trade off between inflation and interest rates, more respondents prefer interest rates to fall than inflation rate, and the majority of the respondents have no idea as to who influences the direction of the interest rates in Nigeria. When respondents were asked what will become of the economy if prices started to rise faster, the survey results showed that 57% of the respondents believe that the economy will end up weaker. It added that 4.9% of the respondents stated that it will be stronger. 14.2% believed it will make a little difference, while 23.9% did not know. The responses showed considerable support for price stability as a majority, 57%, agreed that the economy will end up weaker. This was consistent with the notion that inflation constrained economic growth. When asked how prices had changed over the past 12 months, respondents gave a median answer of 5.1%. And that's all we have on the business desk today. I'm Samira Ibrahim. Thanks for watching. And on the international scene, President Muhammad Buhari has urged African leaders to ensure the immediate actualization of the common African position on asset recovery as the continent celebrates anti corruption day, July 11, 2020. In a letter to South Africa's President Sir Ramaphosa, Chairman of African Union, the Nigerian leader asks for a commitment to the anti-corruption war by leaders on the continent to engender and intercept an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa, driven by its own citizens, representing a dynamic force in the international arena. The president lamented that the massive corruption being perpetrated across our national government has created a huge governance deficit that has in turn created negative consequences that have worsened the social, economic, and political situation in Africa. 247 Nigerians who were stranded in Malaysia and Thailand have arrived at the Namdi Azukwe International Airport, Abuja. Mr. Gabriel Odu, the head of media and public relations unit, of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission said this in a statement on Sunday in Abuja. Mr. Odu said that the returnees arrived at the airport at about 11 p.m. on Saturday, adding that they were transported into the country by a chartered airpiece flight, AKP 7813. Some of them disembarked in Abuja, while others proceed to Mutala Muhammad International Airport, Lagos. All evacuees tested negative for COVID-19 and are now in a 14-day self-isolation as mandated by the NCDC and PTF on COVID-19. Zindzi Mandela, the daughter of South Africa's anti apartheid icons Nelson Mandela and Winnie Madikizela Mandela has died, public broadcasters SABEC has reported. She died in Johannesburg on Monday morning, aged 59. The death has been confirmed by a family source, SABC reports. She was the South African ambassador 
to Denmark at the time of her death and the cause of her death was not immediately revealed. The 59-year-old daughter of former President Nelson Mandela and struggle stalwart Madikizala Mandela passed away at the Johannesburg Hospital in the early hours of this morning. She was Mandela's sixth child and his second with Winnie Madikizala Mandela. That has been the news from Standard Voice Television. To end the news, a quick look at the major headlines. The Zamfar State Police Command has paraded one Nasri Gaba, alias Mo, for giving fake information. President Muhammad Buhari has assured of his administration's determination to support the military to end all sorts of banditry in the country. The federal government has handed over the renovation of the National Theatre in Lagos to the Central Bank of Nigeria. On business, Nigerians believe rising inflation will weaken economy. And on the international scene, President Buhari calls for operationalization on common position on assets recovery. That's the news on behalf of the production crew, head of news and current affairs, Ibrahim Gobertino. I'm Fazia Ibrahim. Goodbye.